Bangor. From the great north woods to the rockbound coast and streaming live in HD worldwide at foxbangor.com, more people choose Good Morning Maine. Today on Good Morning Maine, busy weekend around Bangor and Orno as the college students prepare for another year. Plus, a cafe in Southwest Harbor that has been serving the community for almost 30 years is now up for sale. Hear from the owners this morning. And our top story, a woman in, has been arrested for arson after a fire broke out on, in Norway. This and more local news right now. Good morning and welcome to Good Morning Maine. I'm Emma Smith and let's get a first check of our forecast. Devin Biggs joins us now. Alrighty, thank you very much. Happy Monday. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's largest trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices, with locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. As we start things off this morning, we're looking pretty good out there. Just a few clouds moving in from the west to the east in a few areas, though. A partly cloudy sky will be expected, so if you're looking forward to getting outside, today will be that day to do so. Things will be looking pretty nice. Anything that's developing is going Going off toward the north, we'll have to wait until later in the week for our turn for showers and thunderstorms that will soon be possible. An overall future counts for today, maybe some fog in a few spots, otherwise partly cloudy, but more dense fog will be on the way later on tonight, maybe a few showers on the way by tomorrow morning in the northern ends of the state. Moving forward though, again, a lot of the winds will be out of the southwest at about 5, maybe up to 15 miles per hour today with more of the gusts along the coast to be ready. More gusty winds will be on the way throughout the daytime today, and especially as we head towards the daytime tomorrow. So your forecast for today, middle 80s on the way, partly cloudy and breezy out there. South wind getting out to about 20 miles per hour at times. Later on tonight, middle 60s on the way, partly cloudy areas of dense fog. South wind getting out to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tomorrow, upper 80s, mostly sunny, warm and humid out there. South wind getting up to about 25 miles per hour. Hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period. A mixture of clouds and sun. Temperatures in the 80s. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Devin, thank you. We begin this morning in Norway, where authorities are investigating an apartment fire from this weekend. On Saturday at approximately 2 p.m., investigators from the marshal's office responded from fire marshal's office responded to an apartment fire on Deering Street. You can see most of the blaze caught the second floor in the middle of the structure. According to Shannon Moss, fire marshals determined 39-year-old Katrina O'Connor, who lived in the apartment, allegedly set fire to the complex. She has been charged with arson, according to the release. Only two of the five units were occupied at the time. Both O'Connor and the other tenant did make it out with no injuries. Katrina O'Connor was taken to the Oxford County Jail, where she is be being held without bail. And a Fairfield man has been sentenced to four life sentences for killing three people and severely injuring one woman. We talked to the only survivor, Regina Long. On February 3rd, 2020, Thomas Bonfancy shot and killed Samuel Powers, Jennifer Bryant Flynn, and Sean Curry. Bonfancy also shot Regina Hall Long twice in the body and once in the face, but she remarkably survived. Friday, Justice Bruce Maloney sentenced Bonfancy to four consecutive life sentences and an additional 30 years for the elevated aggravated assault conviction. Everything that the judge touched on, all the human impact uh, as a result of his horrific crimes was right on the mark, and these sentences uh, called for the maximum. Family members of those who died on that tragic day spoke out in court, pleading for the judge to give the maximum sentence. Justice Maloney thanked everyone for presenting those who lost their lives as people and not just victims. Jennifer Bryant Flynn's mother says Bonfancy never once showed any form of regret. Well, I, I wasn't surprised by his lack of remorse. There will never be justice for our family and there will never be justice for uh, Elizabeth, Sam's mom, uh, for Regina who lives in pain continuously. Um, so. But there is accountability at last. Jennifer Bryant Flynn's 17-year-old daughter, Madison Flynn, addressed the court to reflect on her mother's memory. Madison says she wishes things could be different. Jennifer's mother talks about how she wants her daughter to be remembered. Just as a loving person who the community cared about, um, a loving mother and grandmother. Hall says she lost most of her teeth after being shot in the face and suffers from anxiety following her injuries. Being a survivor ain't an easy thing to do. 
I've shaked and cried for two and a half years. Long says she hopes in time to make peace with the horrific events that took place February 3rd, 2020. Time goes by. It'll always be in my thoughts, so, you know. But I made it. In Machias, A.J. Douglas, ABC7, Fox 22. A horrifying scene in Auburn on Saturday. Police and fire departments were called to a home at 56 Dillingham Hill Road for a report of a two-year-old child that was found unresponsive in the family's swimming pool. According to the release, responding officers began emergency life-saving efforts. Auburn Fire Department paramedics arrived and transported the child to Central Maine Medical Center. Tragically, all efforts were unsuccessful and the child did not survive. The Auburn Police Department, with the assistance of the Maine State Police Major Crimes unit are investigating the circumstances of the child's death. The preliminary investigation indicates this incident is an accidental drowning. And Friday, a crash in Fairfield sent two vehicles down an embankment. Fairfield police officer Casey Dugas says 18-year-old Destiny Betts of Stonington made a left turn out of the Circle K parking lot on Norridgewalk Road. According to Dugas, she drove her Ford Escape into the path of a waste removal truck being driven by 33-year-old John Ryan Fitch of South China. Both vehicles left the road and went down an embankment. He says Betts' vehicle rolled over and although she was wearing her seatbelt properly, the seatbelt failed and Betts was ejected from the car. Betts and her passenger were taken to the hospital where they were treated and released. Fitch and his passenger sustained minor in injuries. Dugas says speed does not appear to be a factor in the crash. The time is now 8.07. Coming up next on Good Morning Maine, move-in day for Hudson and, and U Maine occurred last Friday and Saturday. We'll hear from students and an administrator on the sentiment going into the fall semester. But first, let's take another look at that forecast. High of 84 today, breezy and some sun in the sky, dropping down to 64 today, fog and clouds. Tomorrow, beautiful, humid and sunny, high of 88. Do you struggle to open or close your windows? Are they drafty or leaky? Are you constantly adjusting your thermostat only to have your energy bill skyrocket? If you're nodding your head yes, Renewal by Anderson is your best solution. They custom build and install weather tight replacement windows and back them with a generous, fully transferable limited warranty. Call now to schedule your free design consultation. Plus, take advantage of this limited time offer with incredible savings and attractive financing. Don't miss out. Call Renewal by Anderson today. In Maine, it's always buying season. And at Thornton Brothers in Lincoln, we carry new Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Rams for your buying season. Here at Thornton Brothers, we'll help you find the right vehicle specifically for you to suit your lifestyle. As they say, the proof is in the performance. So come on over and test drive a real vehicle from a real dealership or place your order with us and see why it really is buying season here in Maine. Thornton Brothers, Main Street, Lincoln. Hey, Red Sox fans, you've got to play You Pick 'em Red Sox at FoxBangor.com. Local weekly winners receive prizes. Register now at FoxBangor.com. You Pick 'em Red Sox is sponsored by Twin City Tint in Brewer, Comfort Shoes, and more in Newport, Saliba's Rug Cleaners in Bangor, and Twin City Tile in Brewer. Pound the pavement for cancer awareness Sunday, October 9th at the Sea Dog on the Bangor waterfront. Register at runsignup.com. Goodie bags given to the first 200 people to register. Visa gift cards are randomly hidden in goodie bags. You could win $25 or even $100. Fundraise $150 and get a limited edition t-shirt. All proceeds stay in our community. Pound the pavement. Sponsored by the Sea Dog, Ice Pick Vodka, ABC7 and Fox 22 and the Purple Iris Foundation. Register now at runsignup.com. A cafe in Southwest Harbor that has been serving the community for almost 30 years has been put up for sale by its owners. Madeline Gernhardt tells us why. The Quiet Side Cafe, owned by Ralph Reed and his wife Frances, has been a staple of the Southwest Harbor community for 27 <laughs> years, offering delicious homemade baked goods and hosting charitable events for locals in the community. They relocated the store two years ago, and this year, Ralph and Francis decided it was time to close their doors. Well, we just kind of think it's about time to move along, or maybe do something else. My wife might continue to do pies. 
After raising a family in the area and serving five generations of customers, Ralph says he's proud of what he and his wife were able to accomplish for their community. Salto uh, Salva is a wonderful town. Uh, we have served them for, for the whole time. Uh, we've done free Thanksgiving dinners for many, many years and uh, other things for the town. Uh, they've been wonderful in supporting us. Ralph and Francis hope that their legacy will be carried on by the next owners of the store. We're going to be sad if we have to close it. We really hope somebody buys it and takes it over and, and kind of does the same thing. Ralph and Francis thank the community for their continued support over the past 27 years and are looking forward to their future once the shop is sold. In Southwest Harbor, I'm Madeline Gernhardt for ABC7 and Fox 22. Hudson University is welcoming its students back this weekend. Move-in weekend began Saturday for Hudson's incoming first-year students, continued through Sunday with all other upper-class students. Hudson utilized move-in weekend to get its students acquainted with the campus before attending any of their classes. This year, students arrived on campus for the first whole semester without any COVID-19 restrictions since the spring of 2020. I mean... Last year, it was like masks over everybody. You couldn't see anybody's expressions, nobody's face, stuff like that. Um, so this year, you can see everybody smiling. You can walk by people and see them actually smile at you. It feels just much more alive here on campus. Classes for Hudson University begin today. Students attending the University of Maine are returning to campus ahead of the 2022-2023 academic year. Hundreds of students attended move-in day ready to kick off a new school year. UMaine President Joan Farini Mundy says there will be more in-person opportunities this school year. She says the university is still affected by the COVID-19 pandemic and plans to continue supporting public health and safety. It's the new way we are here at the university, but we, we work based on science, and again, our students just are so enthusiastic and so ready to go. Freeney Mundy says the university continues to increase efforts to promote student engagement. Hundreds of first-year University of Maine students showcased their work from research projects conducted during Black Bear Bridge Week, right before the start of the regular semester. At the Collins Center of the Arts, they highlighted their experiences through academic posters, which they made to show what they learned through their research. The research learning experience allows students to actively research a topic that matters to them. Brian Olson, with Student Success and Strategic Initiative for UMaine, says they challenged each student to answer the question, how will you thrive at UMaine? Then they... they carved off a piece of that that they've been working on and some people focused on mental health some people focused on social challenges or how to study or however that that goes and then they've researched evidence both in the peer-reviewed literature as well as talking to to support services on campus to try to figure out when they run into trouble or if they run into trouble this semester how are they going to move through that hardship Olson says another goal is that the students who participated in the programs will share what they learned with other first-year students the time is now 8.13. After the break, we'll get a glimpse of the historic marker that the governor unveiled outside the State House on Friday. Plus, the annual ALS fundraising walk returned this weekend for the first time since the pandemic. All the details when we return. Interest rates are on the rise and making waves in the real estate market. Buying or selling? You need a navigator. I'm Holly Taylor. Come to the one who gets it done. Holly Taylor. Dot Realtor. Last year, I cracked Biden's aggressive spending agenda. Now, I'm delivering on common sense reforms that are good for America, like lowering prescription drug prices for thousands of Maine seniors, preventing health care costs from spiking on working families, and opening up oil and gas production to lower fuel costs, while reducing the deficit by hundreds of billions of dollars. I'm Jared Golden, and I approve this message because Maine Common Sense is back on the table in Washington. Breakdowns, collisions, things happen on the road unexpectedly. But here at Phil's Towing, we understand. With years of experience, our friendly professionals are here for you when you need them the most, no matter how big the task or vehicle is. At Phil's Towing, with our heavy duty trucks, we guarantee an arrival time of 30 minutes or less and are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Give us a call at Phil's Towing. Anytime, anywhere, anything.
Dude, can you believe we're graduating? And they helped us find a great job. Soon we'll be living the dream. Exactly. I'm incredibly grateful for Maine Job Corps. If it wasn't for them, I'd be working an entry-level job and barely making it. Let Team Maine Job Corps help find the career that's right for you. Call 561-8516. Homes are selling in a single day. The real work happens well before. I'm Holly Taylor, and I have the expertise to guide you through your home improvements. Come to the one who gets it done. Holly Taylor, dot Realtor. Governor Mills and members of the Maine Suffrage Centennial unveiled a historic marker outside the State House on Friday. More than 100 years after the Maine Suffrage Movement, markers have been placed around the state to honor some of the women and the men that have contributed to gender equality. Governor Mills cut the ribbon for the marker in Augusta that memorializes the ratification of the 19th Amendment in Maine. In the course of uh, researching and writing women's history, I've, I've just come to understand how hard and long women had to fight for the right to vote. And uh, it's history that we don't teach in our schools well and that people don't know about. The marker in Augusta is just one of the seven throughout the state. The others can be found in Portland, Bangor, Farmington, Lewiston, and on Indian Island. After a three-year break, the ALS Association's Walk to Defeat ALS is back. We heard from organizers and participants eager to spread more awareness. Today, let's walk together in solidarity and in honor of all those who are living with ALS and in memory of all those we have lost. The ALS Association's Walk to Defeat ALS brought out hundreds of walkers. Organizer Carrie Bolsky says walkers can honor their loved ones in person this year following a three-year hiatus as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. We've had a lot of losses that we are coming here today to pay tribute to mm -hmm. since 2019 when we've last been able to be together. Governor Mills attended Saturday's event and took time to talk about her efforts to support individuals living with ALS. Mills signed LD 2007 into law, which creates a mandatory statewide registry, which will track ALS information to further medical studies surrounding the disease. It is my hope that this law will improve our understanding of this terrible disease until we can defeat ALS once and for all. The foundation raised $46,000 in contributions from individual, group, and private donors. We spoke to a walking group that attended the event to spread more awareness about the disease while supporting a loved one. He's an inspiration to all of us. Uh, there's been a lot of outreach with ALS, and they're trying to change that with the legislature and make ALS a known disease. Jackson Lavatory employees joined the Walk to Defeat ALS event, noting that funding is vital to support research to treat individuals living with ALS. In Bangor, A.J. Douglas, ABC7, Fox 22. The time is now 8.18, and before we get a full look at our forecast with Devin Biggs, let's take a look at the NASA live stream. We're looking at the Artemis rocket right now. It's set to launch at about 8.33 a.m. It'll spend 42 days in orbit, and this is setting up the first manned trip to the moon since 1972, and that's sure to be interesting. Now let's throw it over to our full weather forecast with meteorologist Devin Biggs. Good morning, Devin. Alrighty, thank you very much. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's largest trailer dealer, home in Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices, with locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. Alrighty, as we start things off this morning, there's a few clouds that are passing through in a few areas. Things looking pretty good for us. Maybe some areas of patchy fog that have developed as well this morning. That will be getting out of here with plenty of sunshine that will be developing. But so far, the current sub showing high pressure nearby. We'll be watching this system moving, and soon this will give us good chances for showers and thunderstorms later this week, which is good news. We still need the precipitation. So anything that develops here will definitely help things out. Let's take a field trip. I haven't dug this graphic out in a while. We've had trop we have tropical issues starting to develop now. This is what we call Invis 91L right here. And it's tracking a little bit to the west-northwest at about 6 miles per hour. And we'll need to keep an eye on 
on this. So we're expecting this to possibly develop into a tropical system. So what we call the spaghetti plot models have been activated to help track the system. And so far we're thinking a northwesterly track here. And it's going to be getting close to the U.S. coast from the latest thinking right now. So we'll need to keep an eye on this as it tracks off towards the north and west though. And it may even get close to us. So we have a long ways to go with that. So we'll definitely make sure to keep an eye on that. Back here at home, no, we're average high is 77 degrees. We'll be in the middle 80s today, upper 80s for you Tuesday, then upper 70s by Wednesday, Thursday, middle 70s by Friday and a Saturday, and also as we head into your Sunday. Dew points are going to be up, though, feeling a little humid for the next few days. So dew points will reach for the middle 60s, possibly even the 70s as we head towards Wednesday before that cold front moves in, kind of cleans up the atmosphere. It will be more comfortable again by Thursday, Friday, and also in a Saturday. Future counts moving forward, though, again, maybe some clouds and some fog mixed this morning. We'll remain partly cloudy on and off throughout the daytime today. With, of course, maybe a few clouds and some fog on the way again later on tonight. Maybe a few showers further off toward the north. But overall, looking pretty good throughout the day on Tuesday. With a party cloudy sky, future cast tries to get a few sprinkles going. A lot to keep an eye on that as that opportunity may try to exist. With a more dense fog on the way as we head towards Wednesday morning. So overall, though, rain chances later this week looking pretty good out there, though. Maybe some areas seeing up to an inch before we're all finished up. This path may shift a little bit, so keep an eye on this. You might see a little bit more rain than what's indicated here at this point. So your forecast for today, middle 80s, party cloudy and breezy. South wind getting up to about 20 miles per hour. Later on tonight, middle 60s, party cloudy areas of dense fog. South wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tomorrow, upper 80s, it'll be warm out there. Mostly sunny, warm and humid. South wind getting up to about 25 miles per hour. Alrighty, your Scott's Recreation Extended Forecast. Thunderstorms likely on Wednesday, with highs falling back into the upper 70s. Upper 70s on Thursday, with a small chance of rain and a partly cloudy sky. And mostly sunny on Friday, highs in the mid-70s. Comfy, cozy, relaxing. Not Joe. Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find rockers, recliners, sofas, and easy chairs. Quality furniture. Affordable prices. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse. Grogan Avenue in Newport. Last year, I cracked Biden's aggressive spending agenda. Now, I'm delivering on common sense reforms that are good for America, like lowering prescription drug prices for thousands of Maine seniors, preventing health care costs from spiking on working families, and opening up oil and gas production to lower fuel costs, while reducing the deficit by hundreds of billions of dollars. I'm Jared Golden, and I approve this message, because Maine common sense is back on the table in Washington. When Cat Tracks in LaGrange wants to know the local forecast, they log on to foxbangor.com. Cat Tracks in LaGrange is your dealer for Hewitt Lifts and Roller Docks, with the goal to get you on the lake faster than anyone else. People today, they could spend half their lives over 50. I get used to this. So that's good. Make sure your happiness lives as long as you do. That's why the younger you are, the more you need AARP. Join today. General Rental Center has been serving Central Maine with equipment and tool rentals for more than 30 years. Our extensive inventory contains everything you need to get the job done right. Our professional, knowledgeable staff is here to make sure that you get the highest quality rental items to complete your project and that they have been serviced and maintained to the highest standards. Power brooms to get that sand off the lawn, leaf blowers, brush chippers, stump grinders, aerial lifts, tillers, and excavators. We rent most everything. If you don't see it in our online catalog, please ask for it. If we don't have the item you need, we would be happy to help you find it. Durable, sturdy, stylish. Not Joe. Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find solid wood, built to last, made in main dressers, bureaus, and nightstands. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. Now for your national news, federal investigators are poring over classified documents that were seized from former President Trump's compound in Florida earlier this month. This, as Republican lawmakers are questioning why they hadn't been made aware of the concerns over the former chief executive taking vital documentation out of the White House. Fox News correspondent Alexandria Hoff takes a look. The director of national intelligence, Avril Haines, has informed lawmakers on the House Intelligence and Oversight Committees that her office is conducting an assessment of how classified documents were handled by former President Trump. 
This, of course, comes after the Friday release of the redacted affidavit used to obtain a search warrant on the former president's Florida home. It described that in January, 15 boxes of documents were turned over by Trump's team. According to the Justice Department, highly classified records were found mixed in with unrelated notes, magazines, and newspapers. Some of it, the department argued, could have compromised foreign relations and human intelligence sources. The Department of Justice had probable cause vetted by a judge that Donald Trump was obstructing justice and in violation of the espionage clause. This is about our national security. But if this was known earlier this year, Republican Senator Roy Blunt wants to know why he and others weren't notified. Why hadn't the Intelligence Committee that I've been on for my time in the Senate and time in the House, why hadn't we heard anything about this? In fact, if the administration was concerned that there was a national security problem, a small victory for the Trump legal team came yesterday when Judge Eileen Cannon issued a notice of preliminary intent to appoint a third-party attorney to review the documents seized from Mar-a-Lago. The Justice Department was also ordered to provide under seal a more detailed list of what was seized. Trump's legal team argues that some of the items that were taken may have been protected under executive and attorney-client privilege. In Washington, Alexandria Hoff, Fox News. Still to come here on the second half of our show, over the weekend, Bangor was host to a car show, which funded fundraised for local high school students. And even though it's over, the fair in Dover Foxcroft will get a second life when we take a, when we take a look after the break. This and more local news as Good Morning Maine continues. During Toyota's national sales event, we're working hard to deliver new Toyotas so you can enjoy the last of summer. From hitting the rapids with a RAV4 hybrid, to kicking up sand in a tundra, or camping out in a Highlander. Hey guys! Come and get an electrified all-wheel drive RAV4 hybrid with 40 MPG and up to a 580 mile driving range. Plus get affordable 1.9% financing on most RAV4 models. Come in today. Toyota, let's go places. You want to feel important. You want to be a part of something bigger, something that matters and can help change things. You want to feel like you belong. We know. We felt that way too. And that's why we did something about it. We aren't just Army National Guard soldiers. We are normal people just like you. And together, we can make a difference. Take on your legacy. Visit NationalGuard.com to find out more. You're watching Fox 22 Bangor. Welcome back to Good Morning Maine. It's Monday, August 29th, 2022. September starts Thursday. It was 64 years ago today that George Harrison met John Lennon and Paul McCartney, and they all decided, hey, let's become the Beatles. Incidentally, the Beatles last performed their last public concert on this same day, eight years ago later, in San Francisco. Netflix is 25 years old today, starting as an online DVD rental business. Swedish actress Ingrid Bergman, who can forget her role in Casablanca, was born on this day in 1915 and died on this day in 1982 at the age of 67. Today is Individual Rights Day, More Herbs, Less Salt Day, and it's Motorist Consideration Monday. Let's turn it over now to meteorologist Evan Biggs to get a full look at that beautiful forecast. We have a beautiful end of August. All righty, thank you very much. Happy Monday. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's largest trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices, with locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. As we start things off this morning, we're looking pretty good out there. Just a few clouds moving in from the west to the east in a few areas, though. A partly cloudy sky will be expected, so if you're looking forward to getting outside, today will be that day to do so. Things will be looking pretty nice. Anything that's developing is going Going off toward the north, we'll have to wait until later in the week for our turn for showers and thunderstorms that will soon be possible. And overall, future counts for today, maybe some fog in a few spots, otherwise partly cloudy, but more dense fog will be on the way later on tonight. Maybe a few showers on the way by tomorrow morning in the northern ends of the state. Moving forward, though, again, a lot of the winds will be out of the southwest at about 5, maybe up to 15 miles per hour today with more of the gusts along the coast to be ready. More gusty winds will be on the way throughout the daytime today, and especially as we head towards the daytime tomorrow. 
So your forecast for today, middle 80s on the way, partly cloudy and breezy out there. South wind getting up to about 20 miles per hour at times. Later on tonight, middle 60s on the way, partly cloudy areas of dense fog. South wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tomorrow, upper 80s, mostly sunny, warm and humid out there. South wind getting up to about 25 miles per hour. Hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period. A mixture of clouds and sun, temperatures in the 80s. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Thank you, Devin. Hundreds of bicyclists traveled from around the country to participate in Bike Main Weekend. Bike Main hosted a three-day event in Lincoln. The statewide nonprofit is dedicated to advocating for biking and walking safety by educating children and adults. Bikers camped out on the Lincoln High School soccer field and were given the option to take on a long or short route each day. One biker traveled, traveled six hours from Rhode Island to ride for a good cause. It's like a wonderful group of people, fully supported ride, no pressure, you can go as slow or as fast as you want. It's always a wonderful opportunity to bring people to Maine, uh, to bring Mainers to a different part of the state as well and be able to explore Maine by pedal. The town of Lincoln connected with bicyclists by offering cultural events all weekend for riders to learn more about the town. And car enthusiasts gathered in the former Kmart parking lot on Hogan Road in Bangor for a benefit scholarship car show. The second annual David Priest Memorial Cruise Inn took place Saturday to raise money for high school students interested in attending a community college to study the automotive industry or other trades. There was no cost to participate, but donations were encouraged. Money was also raised through numerous raffles at this weekend's event. Car show organizers say the funds raised will help students with the cost of tuition, books, or even tools needed for their classes. David loved working on cars, looking forward to going to college and, and working and opening a shop with his dad. Uh, but unfortunately, shortly after graduation, he was stricken with leukemia and he passed away. And so this show was to benefit uh, him and to raise money for the David Priest Scholarship Foundation. Organizers say $8,000 were raised. And now here's a look at some of the upbeat stories making headlines today. Army Sergeant Alberto Maltron was killed in Afghanistan in 2006 and his wife died last year, leaving their 22-year-old daughter to care for her three younger siblings. Last week, the family was surprised with a brand new, fully furnished, mortgage-free three-bedroom home, all thanks to building homes for heroes and several other local companies. A man and his 76-year-old father are safe after the Boston PD's Harbor Patrol unit rescued them when their lobster boat sank. The rescue was captured on body cam. The men said their boat got tangled in lobster lines and failed and was punctured after the current pushed the boat onto rocks. On Sunday, the pair thanked their rescuers. A black Ford Escort, once owned by Princess Diana, was auctioned off over the weekend. The auctioneer called it the car of the day with just 25,000 miles on it. A buyer from northwest England won the auction with a bid of $764,000. And a fireworks display was held over the weekend in Budapest to celebrate Hungary's national holiday. It drew tens of thousands to the Danube River. Two of the country's top meteorologists recommended postponing the show due to storms, which organizers did. But the storms never hit the capital, and the meteorologists were fired. And those are some of the other stories making headlines on ABC7. And now before we move over to sports, let's take a look at the launch pad in Cape Canaveral, Florida. We are just minutes away from the Artemis rocket launching. It says right here on the NASA schedule that it should launch at 8.33 a.m. If anybody wants to pull up that live stream that's online, go to nasa.gov slash nasa live. It's scheduled to launch at 8.33 a.m. Or, yes, 8.33 a.m., and then the core stage ICPS separation will take place about eight minutes after that, with the wing deploy taking place about 18 minutes after the initial launch. So that is set for pretty much any minute now. And this, um, this rocket is supposed to spend 42 days in orbit, which is setting up the first manned trip to the moon since 1972. So... Let's see. I can't hear a countdown, but like I said, if you want to see the launch yourself, what's scheduled to be the launch, go to nasa.gov slash nasa live. And we'll throw it over to advertisement break and we'll be back. We'll be back with sports when we return. 
Timberland Herbal Connections, your locally owned dispensary. Timberland Herbal Connections is located across the street from the Waterfront Pavilion right off Main Street. Don't want to leave home? Timberland Herbal Connections is now offering delivery in the greater Bangor area. General Rental Center has been serving Central Maine with equipment and tool rentals for more than 30 years. Our extensive inventory contains everything you need to get the job done right. Our professional knowledgeable staff is here to make sure that you get the highest quality rental items to complete your project and that they have been serviced and maintained to the highest standards. Power brooms to get that sand off the lawn, leaf blowers, brush chippers, stump grinders, aerial lifts, tillers, and excavators. We rent most everything. If you don't see it in our online catalog, please ask for it. If we don't have the item you need, we would be happy to help you find it. On the next the Last Man Standing, Kyle's put in charge of HR. Is there a problem? Because if there is, I'm supposed to help solve it. We'd like to file a complaint against someone. Who are we filing the complaint against? Mike Baxter. <laughs> but it's the boss who's making trouble. Leave Kyle alone. He's trying to make a name for himself. You already have your names. What, what are they? Tweedledee. Tweedledum. <laughs> Last Man Standing. This afternoon, starting at 4 on Fox 22. Timberland Herbal Connections, your locally owned dispensary. Timberland Herbal Connections is located across the street from the Waterfront Pavilion right off Main Street. Don't want to leave home? Timberland Herbal Connections is now offering delivery in the greater Bangor area. The Million Dollar Music Guessing Game is back. Beat Shazam! With the best dad and daughter team. Dad, do not embarrass me. Beat Shazam, part of Million Dollar Music Mondays tonight on Fox. Welcome back for sports. In less than a week, the regular season begins for most fall sports, including volleyball. Here's Dave Peck with more of your local news. Yeah, yeah, it was a good season last year. It was a lot of fun. When the final bus ride home ends in a parade, calling 2021 a good season might be an understatement. I still remember coming home on the fan bus and everybody's just cheering for you and they're screaming and like the fire trucks are out and it's a big parade and it was super, super fun. Last year, Washington Academy Volleyball captured its second state title in three chances. But that's now history for the trophy case. I think it was good, but we got to like forget about it. We're a new season, so we can't just think we're winners just because we won last. Time. We just have to kind of forget about, well not really forget about the championship, but it's a new year so we have to kind of start over and just continue playing as hard as we can. Now as defending state champs, the message from head coach Corey Schwinn is pretty straightforward. Neutral is not an option. Uh, we're going to continue to improve, we're going to continue to grow. We are fortunate to have a very experienced team. Um, we do have uh, a lot of seniors this year, and, and but we're not going to stay stagnant. Neutral is not an option. The Raiders bring back every one of their starters from last year's championship team. But it's still a new year with new dynamics to navigate. We have a couple new players, but honestly, like everybody changes year from year. It's never it's never going to be the same team. Even if you, if you have the same people on it, you have a new environment, a new community, and you have to work with what you have. This preseason has given Schwinn and the team a chance to tinker with the lineup. But come September 3rd, it's go time for the Raiders. We always have to have the opportunity to shuffle the deck the way in which the team needs it. And um, so they've been really good at being uh, able to adapt and adjust, and, um, and we'll see where it goes. But it's been a fun preseason so far. Let's take a look at what you may have missed over the weekend. We'll start at the beautiful East Lake Golf Club in Atlanta, Georgia. The man of the day, Rory McIlroy, finishing up and taps in for his final par. McIlroy wins a third, or third FedEx Cup as he overcomes the largest 54-hole deficit in FedEx Cup history. Switching to the pavement, last lap in Daytona, Austin Dillon holds off teammate Tyler Reddick and takes the checkered flag. Dillon gets his first win of the year and punches his ticket into the playoffs. And it was uh, 
Ichiro Suzuki weekend over in Seattle. The Mariners celebrating and inducting him into the team's Hall of Fame on Saturday night. Certainly a prelude to his induction into Cooperstown in a few years. And a mint condition Mickey Mantle baseball card sold for $12.6 million on Sunday, blasting into the record book as the most ever paid for sports memorabilia in a market that has grown exponentially more lucrative in recent years. Well, from top headlines to one of the top stories that took social media by storm. In the NFL, the rape allegation against the Buffalo Bills punter cut by the team this weekend. Questions are being raised about when the team knew about the allegation and if acted soon and if it acted soon enough. Here's ABC's Andrew Timber. This morning, Matt Ariza is out of the NFL. The Buffalo Bills releasing the rookie punter after he was accused, along with two college teammates, of gang raping an underage teen. At this time, we just think it's the best move for everyone to move on from Matt. The alleged attack came at a Halloween party last fall when Ariza was a star at San Diego State. The two other players allegedly involved have been removed from the school's roster. A civil lawsuit filed by a 17-year-old claims she was observably intoxicated while with Ariza and that he led her into a bedroom where the other two players were waiting. The alleged victim spoke to San Diego Station KPPS. They threw me down onto the bed uh, face down and they took turns um, assaulting me. Her father spoke to ABC News. The first thing I did was Oh my Lord, how do I make sure that my daughter is physically cared for and safe? Then you bet anger comes in. Arise's attorney claims this is all a money grab. He is 100% adamant that he never forcibly raped this young lady or forcibly had sex with her in any type of way. Ariza saying in a statement, the facts of the incident are not what they are portrayed in the lawsuit or in the press. I look forward to quickly setting the record straight. The Bills say they had no knowledge of the accusations when they drafted Ariza in April, but the alleged victim's lawyer was in contact with the Bills in late July, weeks before the civil lawsuit was filed last Thursday. The Bills then released Ariza Saturday, two days later, amid growing public backlash. There are growing calls for the NFL to be held accountable amid a slew of sexual assault scandals. The NFL did not respond to our request for comment. And the greatest tennis players in the world are in New York to compete in the U.S. Open, which kicks off today. But all eyes are on the woman who dominated the sport for a generation. Here's Rhiannon Alley with more. Later today, Serena Williams will take the court in what is likely the last tournament of her career. Her as an athlete have been not just a tennis player, have been one of the most important athletes in the, in the history of the sport. Some of the biggest stars in tennis are reflecting on what the 23-time Grand Slam winner means to the sport. She's the biggest thing that will ever be in the sport. Before Serena came along, there wasn't, you know, not really an icon of the sport that looked like me. And fans are clamoring to get one final look at the six-time U.S. Open champ. Following her retirement announcement, ticket prices for the first rounds of the tournament have risen 40%. The center court night session was really sold very quickly once everyone heard that uh, that's going to be Serena's match. And although Serena appearing in the final is far from guaranteed, tickets for the championship match are up nearly 70 percent with fans anticipating one last great run. I think anything can happen and we have Serena Williams here, the greatest female tennis player of, of all time and I think she can surprise anyone. Let's just see and, and take one match at a time. But Serena's first match tonight won't be an easy one. Serena hasn't played much competitive tennis this year and is the 605th ranked player in the world. Her opponent tonight, Denka Kovinich, is ranked 80th. But if the singles tournament doesn't pan out for Serena, she'll have another chance to take home a championship as she battles for the doubles trophy with the woman who's been by her side since the very beginning, her sister Venus. Serena and Venus will be on the court together on Wednesday. And that does it for sports. We'll be right back in 90 seconds. Why should your new floor come from Carpet One? Because we're passionate about the spaces our neighbors call home. 
We're part of your community, and we're also part of the world's largest cooperative of independently owned and operated flooring stores. So you can be sure you'll get great selection and outstanding value with every installation. Whether it's carpet, hardwood, tile, or luxury vinyl, our experts take the guesswork out of choosing the right floor. We're your local Carpet One Floor and Home, the one store for your perfect floor. Hey, it's Eric from Green Bear 420. We've been in business since 2010 and going strong, so stop in and check us out. We specialize in glass art by over 100 local artists and even have live glass blowing. Plus, we carry incense, novelties, t-shirts, and hard-to-find items. We have tons of local products for the tie-dye wearing person in your circle of friends. Come see us at 531 Moosehead Trail in Newport. And remember, Green Bear 420, it's not just a store, it's a lifestyle. The bond between twins is a close one. One, two, three, four, I declare a thumb war. Ah. As day is tonight. Would you like me to introduce you to algebra? Al who? Oh boy. And wrong is to right. They both say weird kid who eats alone. You can't have one without the other. I need my own space. But we've always shared a room. I have a training bra. When you complete your training, get back to me. Young Sheldon. Weekdays at 6 on Fox 22. Welcome back and a good morning, May. We are here with Kelly Cookson. You are the director of Save a Life Recovery Center in Lincoln, and she's with us today to detail the candlelight vigil that will occur on Wednesday to honor the Mainers who have lost their lives to overdose. Kelly, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Can you detail what the significance of the, the vigil and what it means for you guys and for the, the community? Yeah, Interno International Overdose Awareness Day um, began in Australia and has moved worldwide, and now August 31st, is recognized as a day for the community to come together to grieve for our losses in a stigma-free environment and also to educate the public on ways to avoid overdose and prevent and to share our stories of hope because people can and do recover every day and I feel that that aspect is very important. I know, and there's all sorts of tools for that now, too. There is, yes. Right. So, I mean, what was really jarring to me, and it says here in your press release, is that this is to remember the hundreds of Mainers, which 504 in, 22 lost their, in 2020 lost their life to overdose, and 94 of those were just in Penobscot County, which seems really high to me. I agree, and I actually did a little bit more homework after that because I thought that number was significant as well, and it turns out per capita we were number nine or ten in the state, uh, or I'm sorry, in the country, in wow. the country. Um, Penobscot County was nine or ten in the country for overdoses. Maine was, and Penobscot County oh. is number two, wow. and it's not very populated, so that it is, is a very high number. Yeah. I know, I'm sure there's all sorts of research going into why, and I will, I will want to know why more in the future, too. I would like to know more why as well. Uh, a right. lot of resources have been, in the last couple of years, we've seen with the opioid crisis going on in Maine, there's been a lot of resources and a lot of movements and pushes to combat this crisis. And what kind of things have you seen just here in Maine through the people that you've talked to of the new initial efforts that are kind of being, being pushed forward to you know, talk about this more, and it goes along the side of mental health and other problems that we didn't talk about so much in the past, and now we're starting to open up. So what are some of those conversations that you've had with people who have struggled with opioid addiction? Well, stigma and shame are, are huge barriers. So in talking to people in the community, I think once they recognize that they can begin to speak, to somebody who is not going to judge them, it really opens up a flow of conversation. And I've seen some of those people go on after a conversation to become public on their social media platforms. And we really need to normalize these conversations with people. I feel that's 
very important. It's hard to ask for help for anything. Absolutely. And this, this especially, it's like, yes. where do I start? And, and how can people even help me? And I think that's why you guys exist. Save a Life is exactly. to serve the community for that reason. Yeah, Save a Life started about eight years ago as just a task force of community, concerned community members who recognized there was a problem and became a 501c3 nonprofit. And we opened our Community Recovery Resource Center last June. Nice, congratulations. Thank you. I know in Bangor we have Barn. Yes. Yep, so you guys serve Lincoln. And what other ways do you help the community? I know we were talking about Narcan before. Do you do you have, um, you, you had an example, correct? I do, if yes. You, if you'd um, like to show, I'd, I'd love to um, just show what the box and packaging looks like. Yeah, uh, harm reduction is one of the things that we offer. Um, this is a, a Narcan box and People tend to be afraid of this medication um, because they think that it's going to be difficult to use or that they might accidentally use it on someone who doesn't need it. Um, this, is, this is what Narcan actually looks like. It is a one-dose nasal spray, much like Flonase, hmm. and um, it will not cause any harm to anyone who's not overdosing. So. Uh, so if you're, like you said, if you're not overdosing, if you want to just be sure and Narcan someone, it's not going to hurt them. Correct? I mean, I can Correct. show you all Narcan myself right now. Yeah. It's I've, one of those things where it's like, this is a conversation that needs to be had so you can understand this. Because yeah. from this, my knowledge, I mean, lives, yeah. I'm not no expert in anything to do with the opioid crisis. I know how bad it is, but I didn't even know that you could use this without I didn't it and either. it would be all right. Yeah. Yep. Just like flow nails. No harm, no foul. It just tastes a little funny. <laughs> a just like any up. sort of that's, nasal spray, I, that's I do that. use the Yeah, thing, exactly. But. You'll get yeah. a little aftertaste. Yeah, what this does is it specifically goes after those opioid receptors that are in your brain. Gotcha. And it makes them release and causes your nervous system to begin working properly again. Because when you're overdosing, you're going to likely experience a loss of consciousness. Um, yeah. So you would kind of use your knuckle and rub someone's sternum hard. And if they're not responding, appropriately or at all, um, 911 would hopefully be the first step, um, yep. Narcan. Uh, you're also going to look for signs of oxygen loss, which would look like blue fingernail beds. Uh, mm -hmm. It could look like blue lips or a blue tone to your skin if you're fair skinned, if you're darker. Uh, it might look like a grayish sort of tint, so those and, would be And some I'll signs. cut you off because yeah. I know that we're coming up at the time, but yeah. how can people donate to Save a Life and where will the can where and when will the candlelight vigil be? The candlelight vigil will be held in Lincoln at the gazebo behind the loon. I think everyone knows the loon <laughs> at 7 p.m. on August 31st. Yep. Uh, we will have speakers, we'll have a candlelight vigil, and there will be a banner with 504 purple ribbons as sort of a visual uh, display to see the impact of this on our community. Yep. Um, Save a Life relies heavily on donations from the community to offer all of the many programs and resources that we do. And um, one way you can donate is through Venmo at uh, uh, SAL Recovery. And we also have a PayPal director at salrecoverynetwork.org. Or you can give us a call at 403-9100, any time to find out more about all of the many programs and resources that we're offering at Save a Life. Excellent. And we'll link those. We'll post this video online, and we'll link those on our website as well. Thank you very much for coming in Thank and talking you. with I us today. Thank you. I appreciate the it opportunity. It was a pleasure. Thank it really you. was. We'll throw Thank it over you. to Devin Beggs with another check of our forecast. Alrighty, thank you very much. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's largest trailer dealer, home in Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices, with locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. Alrighty, as we start things off this morning, there's a few clouds that are passing through in a few areas. Things looking pretty good for us. Maybe some areas of patchy fog that have developed as well this morning. That will be getting out of here with plenty of sunshine that will be developing. But so far, the current sub showing high pressure nearby. We'll be watching this system moving in soon. This will give us good chances for showers and thunderstorms later this week, which is good news. We still need the precipitation. So anything that develops here will definitely help things out. Let's take a field trip. I haven't dug this graphic out in a while. We've had trop we have tropical issues starting to develop now. This is what we call Invis 91L right here. And it's tracking a little bit to the west-northwest at about 6 miles per hour. And we'll need to keep an eye on 
on this. So we're expecting this to possibly develop into a tropical system. So what we call the spaghetti plot models have been activated to help track the system. And so far we're thinking a northwesterly track here. And it's going to be getting close to the U.S. coast from the latest thinking right now. So we'll need to keep an eye on this as it tracks off towards the north and west though. And it may even get close to us. So we have a long ways to go with that. So we'll definitely make sure to keep an eye on that. Back here at home, no, we're average high is 77 degrees. We'll be in the middle 80s today, upper 80s for your Tuesday. Then upper 70s by Wednesday, Thursday, middle 70s by Friday and a Saturday, and also as we head into your Sunday. Dew points are going to be up, though, feeling a little humid for the next few days. So dew points that will reach for the middle 60s, possibly even the 70s as we head towards Wednesday before that cold front moves in, kind of cleans up the atmosphere. It will be more comfortable again by Thursday, Friday, and also in a Saturday. Future counts moving forward, though, again, maybe some clouds and some fog mixed this morning. We'll remain partly cloudy on and off throughout the daytime today. With, of course, maybe a few clouds and some fog on the way again later on tonight. Maybe a few showers further off toward the north. But overall, looking pretty good throughout the day on Tuesday. With a party cloudy sky, future cast tries to get a few sprinkles going. A lot to keep an eye on that as that opportunity may try to exist. A little more dense fog on the way as we head towards Wednesday morning. So overall, though, rain chances later this week looking pretty good out there, though. Maybe some areas seeing up to an inch before we're all finished up. This path may shift a little bit, so keep an eye on this. You might see a little bit more rain than what's indicated here at this point. So your forecast for today, middle 80s, party cloudy and breezy. South wind getting up to about 20 miles per hour. Later on tonight, middle 60s, party cloudy areas of dense fog. South wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tomorrow, upper 80s, it'll be warm out there. Mostly sunny, warm and humid. South wind getting up to about 25 miles per hour. Already, your Scott's Recreation Extended Forecast. Thunderstorms likely on Wednesday, with highs falling back into the upper 70s. Upper 70s on Thursday, with a small chance of rain and a partly cloudy sky. And mostly sunny on Friday, highs in the mid-70s. 7.8 million dollars that's how much I made home sellers in the past two years. Planning on selling? I'm Holly Taylor. Come to the one gets it done. HollyTaylor.Realtor. Does your dream kitchen look like this? Or this? Or maybe you need a little more inspiration. Get it when you explore the complete in-store showroom displays at Hammond Lumber Company. When you find the look you like, the Hammond team will help you customize it, including accurate 3D renderings so you can visualize your project before the work begins. Hammond offers delivery from any of the locations across Maine and New Hampshire and professional service after the sale. Your dream kitchen begins when you bring your vision to Hammond Lumber Company. Hey, Red Sox fans, you've got to play You Pick 'em Red Sox at BoxBangor.com. Local weekly winners receive prizes. Register now at foxbangor.com. You Pick'em Red Sox is sponsored by Twin City Tint in Brewer, Comfort Shoes and More in Newport, Saliba's Rug Cleaners in Bangor, and Twin City Tile in Brewer. It takes all types to play Family Feud. The Sensible Brother. What would you do if you found the top half of a bikini? You smell it. The Showstoppers. The Cooks. Give me a seasoning. A chef might name his daughter. Not made. <laughs> Don't do that to your baby. See who shows up all season on Family Feud. Weeknights at 7 on Fox 22. When selling your home, knowing your options could make you tens of thousands of dollars. That's what I do for my clients. I'm Holly Taylor. Come to the one who gets it done. Holly Taylor, dot Realtor. If you've been to a farmer's market or the grocery store recently, you probably noticed how reasonable cukes are right now. And for those of you who are growing them in your garden, you know how abundant they can be. So to take advantage of this bounty, let me show you how to turn them into pickles. As easy as one, two, three. We start by slicing our cukes and onions. If you have a food processor with a slicing blade, this is the easiest way to go. I usually double or triple the recipe since these stay fresh in the fridge for about a week. So if you're making them, you might as well go ahead and make a bunch. Now, we'll put these in a microwave safe bowl along with some sugar, white vinegar, and a bunch of spices, which includes mustard seed, salt, celery seed, and a bit of turmeric for color. We'll give these a good mix and microwave them for a few minutes. 
just remember to give them a stir halfway through. Once they're done, cover them and pop them in the fridge for a couple of hours to chill up. The hard part will be deciding what to serve these with, since they go with just about everything. So whether you plan on serving them at your next family barbecue or pairing them up with tonight's dinner, you can't go wrong. To get the recipe for our homemade microwave pickles, simply visit our website. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a pickalicious way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. And now to wrap up the third hour of our show, let's check back in with the...